Hello again, I've been experimenting in PD Howler with animated brush tips and I just thought I'd go through the process of how I made some of these brushes. So I thought I would use some animations of uh, particle sprites. So I downloaded some free animations from itch.io by David Massier and Code Manu Pro and these were all created with their program Pixel FX Designer. I'll show you some of the, the things I thought might be good. So they all come in sprite sheets so I had to separate each of the images into separate images before I could make the brushes in PD Howler so I will go through how I did that and I'm going to create a custom brush using I thought this one might be nice so it's a small sprite um, but we can resize that in PD Howler and do edits, rotates and things like that. It's all quite easy so I'll show you how I did all of that as well. So first of all I'll just show you some other brushes I, I had a go at making. This was a strange flamey brush, another free animation I used from itch.io. I'll put the links to the different animations I found on an article on my blog later. So, And this was one called Magic Bubbles from the pack I just described earlier. Um, So basically the idea behind this sort of brush is to create some sort of randomness and it just might be good for foliage or special effects or different details in the scene without having to do lots of uh, tiny edits and things. It's quite a fast way of making foliage or um, maybe snow or special effect. Anyway, so I'll close this down. And what I did was I went into a program called Texture Packer. Um, and there's a tool in this program called Split Sheet. And then you find the sprite sheet you want to split into separate images and you drag, well, you try to drag it. I wasn't doing it with my pen tablet, I don't know why, so maybe the program doesn't support my pen tablet. Anyway, so I dragged that in with my mouse and I could actually resize it here, that might be. What I was doing in PD Howler was I was resizing it in that program though, so I'll, I'll show you how to do that. But you could actually resize it here as well. Obviously if you're going to make it bigger, you, the image won't be as crisp because it, it won't resample it very well. So, But that doesn't matter for custom brushes so much. Um, so I select the folder I want to save it in and I'll call it Midnight and I'll 
just call this midnight. Uh, puts the number for each sprite automatically, so that should all be fine. The thing I did find though for PD Howler is it doesn't like this this format so much. It uses um, four numbers, so really if it was PD Howler's format these should have two zeros on the start of them, like that. But it doesn't matter as long as I make sure that the first ones have at least two zeros on. I mean two, two uh, decimal places. Um, and I'll, I'll only have to do this for the first ten. Well, up to nine actually. It would have been nice if there was an option to choose the format in uh, the texture packer program, but it's not too difficult to do that. So now that I've got those ready, I'll reopen PD Howler because the thing I did find was that if I try doing this bit while I'm in PD Howler, it, it doesn't see the updates. If you add a folder or something where it's browsing to find the images, it, it won't update unless you close and open the program. So I thought I'd just do that first. Then I could dra drag and drop the first image I want to, as a start. So we've got that in the program and the black background in PD Howler is actually representing the alpha because the layers don't support alpha so it will appear as black. But then what I need to do is go to brush, copy selected as brush, then go to more, load sequence, then find the folder with the sprites, so to remember which it was, uh, folder midnight and then Hopefully all the numbers are in the right order, which they look like they are. So I select all of them, I just shift clicked it, and then I say load selected. Now I can see if I go to brush, animated brush timeline, they should all be in the timeline. So if I drag this, I can see in the the timeline the the animation plays. This menu you can do edits and uh, different things and um, all of the edits will affect each frame of the animation so that's quite handy so you wouldn't have to edit each sprite individually which would be a Pain. So, what I could do is uh, go to transform and I could rotate it. I'm not going to, but if I wanted to then apply one of these edits, I would click render and it would render a new thing with the edit in this destination timeline. And then you would go to options use dust as brush, but I'm just going to keep it as it is, because I don't want to get too complicated. So I've got that, that brush. I suppose what I also could do is say store brush image for further manipulation. There's a little icon up here, and then this will appear here. 
If I say show film strip, that shows the sprites as well. And you can add images here as well, or delete frames, uh, add frames. Actually, I could I could scale them here if I wanted to as well. I'm going to scale it to 400 pixels by 400 pixels. So I'll do that another way though. If I go to brush, resample, now I can save and I've constrained it so both will be the same. Say OK and then they'll all be resized to 400 pixels by 400. Now to test the brush I'll create a new image and hopefully, yep yeah, there you go. So we need to edit this a little bit. Maybe the size 100% should be the 400. Probably not the best uh, animation to, to use as a brush, but this is just an example. What I could do is increase the spacing. And the other thing I would do is say matte custom, matte brush style. Let's choose a colour so we can actually see what's going on. So it's just a flat thing at the moment. So then I would say let's give it a random hue to make it look a bit more interesting. Maybe not that much. So maybe a bit of a random saturation. You can play with this sort of thing and see what you like. Maybe even a random value, although I suppose you could use it for something. I'll just keep that at a low thing at the moment. If I wanted it to smudge the colour as I paint, I would turn the bleed up. So if I... It will pick up the underlying colour a bit. The more you set this, the more blendy it is. So it will be more like a smudge brush sort of thing. So I don't want that too high. Try out is the paper, so as the more I click, the fainter it will get, depending on the dry out setting. I don't think I'll bother with that one. I could say, let's give it a random angle. So then, got a bit more randomness going on. I'll put it at 50. I could even say let's give it a random size. Uh, I think I'll keep that one low. And the random position is like uh, it's sort of the same as jitter in other programs. So that will space it out in random positions so the higher you have this the more random it will be and wider the range. Uh, 
uh, the speed scale. The faster I move the brush, it will scale it. So if I go slow, it's just uniform, and then if I go like that, it's uh, going from big to small. I don't think I'll bother with that one for this, so I'll put it back at zero. Um, the step is quite high, but you have to play with this depending on the shape of the brush to, to see what you like. So. I think that's okay. Uh, I could tr change the angle, but sort of defeats the point. It, well, it'll change the angle of the brush tip depending on where my tablet is going, the direction of it. So it might work for some things. You might like this. So say that that might be a good brush to start blocking in a tree or a, a cave wall or something. With the angle value. Whereas if I didn't have the angle value then I could use it more for say bushes or something. And if I wanted this brush tip to be rotated in another way, I could actually... There are settings here, you could flip the brush horizontally or vertical with these settings. Or you could go back up to the brush, animated brush timeline and then Go to transform and use the rotate value here and then render it out. So I'll do that as an example. Say I want to do it 90 degrees and this, this preview isn't very accurate actually, It's uh, but it will be fine when I've clicked render. So I say render and then you can see here it's rotated it to the left 90 degrees in the destination. So then if I wanted to use the rotated version I would go to options use dest as brush but I don't really want to so I'm gonna just close oh okay so it's used that. So I would uh, Okay, so closing it, you keep the changes, so remember not to do that. <laughs> well, I could rotate it again to get it back, but I'll just leave it. Right, so that's a good tip, so if you do that and you close it, it uses it, so... There you go. That's okay, I think I sort of prefer it. So that, that might be... Uh, I don't know what you could use with that. So, you just have to use your imagination how you could create some sort of random blocky shapes or maybe as a starting point for painting or to block in things like bushes, grass, uh, rocks, um, water, anything you can think of really. So that's the custom animated brushes in PD Howler. There's probably other ways to do it. This program is quite forgiving in that you've got lots of different, some different ways to get to the same place, if you know what I mean. So. But I thought that that process was quite logical, so that's the one I went to. And then to, if you wanted to save your brush, you would go to a folder you want to use, 
or you could create a folder. Let's say I create a folder, so I'll call it Animated Custom and then go OK. So there's my folder and say save your current brush with all of its settings and I'll call it oh, I can't remember what it was I'll just call it um, Mystic Rock sounds a bit wrong Mystic Blob thing And there's my brush saved. And then if I wanted to save it out and maybe give it to someone, you could also go to go brush, more, what was it? Yep, yeah, save animated brush. And then you can save it. I did this with a few brushes, so. That's how I know it works. And it saves it as a AMP type, which must be something just for PD Howler, I would have thought. So it probably won't work with other software, but I don't know. So anyone with PD Howler, I could give that brush to and they could use it then. So that's the animated brush tips. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.